She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. We are very, very blessed that you decided to join us today. Whether you have joined us from the UA Network, the Truth Network, or whatever other network has decided to pick up the show, uh, or if you're watching this on the website, dannyjohnson.com or our app, we are very, very blessed that you decided to join us. And we hope that you decide to join us each and every single day because here on The Danny Johnson Show, we bring you tips and strategies, even skill development to help your life in the area of your career your finances, and your relationships, both at home as well as at work. And we want to see you succeed in every area of your life. Today is that one day of the week that we set apart to make it about spiritual matters. You see, when your spiritual life is a mess, everything else seems to spin out of control as well. And what do I mean by spiritual matters? Well, finances are completely... um, yeah, directed by your spiritual matters, uh, your emotions, your mind, uh, fear, anxiety, worry. These are all spiritual matters as well as uh, how you doing in those personal relationships as well as the relationships at work. All of that is spiritual stuff. So we turn to the greatest success book ever written. It's the book where I have certainly found the most help <laughs> more than anybody else's book ever. Uh, and, it, and the best success book ever written is not my book, uh, but it's God's book. And um, that's the book that we turn to for guidance in, the, in your family life, in your relationships at work, as well as your relationships with your physical self and your finances. So today we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to have this show set apart for nothing but spiritual Q&A, as well as a time to pray. You'd be amazed at the kind of questions and the concerns and in places where people are needing to have a breakthrough. And that's what we're going to experience today as we kind of journey on in this spiritual uh, river, if you will. We are going to find that there are answers, there is guidance, there is help, and I believe that there's going to be incredible breakthrough for so many. Before I get started, I'm going to first open with a word of prayer. Depending on what your faith is, you might not believe in prayer. No matter what your faith is, I'm sure you believe in being blessed (laughs) and wanting to receive a blessing. Father, I thank you so much for today for this program. I thank you for all the hands and the feet that help the program to come into fruition. Not only all of us who are working on it here um, in our studio, but also all of those who are on the networks and YouTube and everyone who controls the internet and our website and the apps, all of that stuff. There's just so many thousands of hands that make it possible for us to be able to participate together, uh, for content to be able to be delivered to those who are seeking it, who are needing it. So we need you, God, to be the one that speaks. People are not calling in to ask advice from a woman, a human. Uh, They want advice and direction from you. So you need to be the one to speak. You need to be the one who directs and guides. Father, we just release over every one of us today words of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Uh, that we wouldn't lean on our own understanding, we wouldn't lean on our own wisdom or knowledge, but that we would truly seek yours and that you would deliver it for us. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Okay, first we're going to go over to uh, Charlotte Beecher from Washington, D.C. Charlotte, welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. How can I help you today? Uh, Hi, yes, Danny. Um, My question is the balance between and that versus between Trusting God in everything in our lives and stepping out and believing for the impossible for our lives. I seem to struggle in that a lot. But tell me, how is that different? Well, I think, you know, in the Bible, there was always, you know, when they wanted a miracle, God always gave them an instruction. Yeah. You know, it seemed to, to be there that they had to work for that miracle, yeah. too. You know, <laughs> he had to go dip in the pool, those types of things. He yeah. Had to, yeah, there's an our part. My life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. My life is, you know, I trust God in everything, but I also have things in my life that seem impossible mm-hmm. for me to obtain, you know, maybe with some shortcomings in my life and things like that, um, and wanting to stand and believe. And then when you start to stand and believe, it seems like the enemy starts coming after you and everything. And mm-hmm. then it's just like, I fall back to that, 
well, I guess I just trust God in, in all of this. And mm-hmm. is it right? Do I still keep believing for the impossible? And I think that's where I, I struggle. Okay, oh. well, I have a question for you. If you were God and um, uh, your child was asking that question, what would you say? That's a good question for me. I mean, what would you want? What would you want from your years, child? I think I would probably, I think I do answer a lot of those questions sometimes. I actually think I, I handle things sometimes like that in my own life of, of, you know, um, we're children and that's how children, you know, we deal and things like that. But I, I think that if a child was saying to me, you know, I, I want this thing that, mm-hmm. you know, seems impossible, I probably would tell them if you really, really want it keep fighting for it yeah you know yeah. do everything you possibly can you yeah. know, if you want to be an athlete and get ahead then you're going to need to work at it you know work really hard yeah and those types of things and resistance um, is normal and it's part of the strengthening for the vision and the impossible to happen okay so let's right. go here if i was god i would want my children to trust me and to believe for the impossible and step towards it That's what I would want. I would want for my character to be trusted. I would want for my character to be known and that the impossible is not impossible. That The Bible is clear and it says that all things are possible for those who believe and who are in Christ Jesus. That's what it says. And so when it doesn't happen as fast as we want it to, We have a tendency of then creating excuses and shrinking back in our belief and just really teetering on not believing anymore, giving up on it. And so I believe that God wants us to continuously believe until we take our last breath. Look at Abraham. He believed. He followed God. He took action, right? He took the appropriate steps. Did he ever see that his descendants were as great as in number as the sand on the seashore or the stars of the sky? Right. He didn't personally see that. He personally never saw it. Right. Right. But he never stopped believing. He never stopped pressing forward. He never stopped trusting God. So that's the answer. You never stop. Right. You never stop. Now, there's something that you said. The enemy seems that when you press forward, it seems like the enemy comes against you. Okay. I don't think that the enemy is all knowing, all powerful, or ever present. <laughs> and he has 7 billion people to mess with. <laughs> right. So is it really the enemy or is it your flesh? Because the flesh is the real war to battle against. It's the flesh. So when you say the enemy comes against you, what does that look like? Or is it your flesh? Well, I understand. I do, though, believe that sometimes, you know, like it seems like, you know, like even right now in my own life, you know, my mother had a stroke and um, I'm having to leave my job because they can't afford to pay me anymore. And so I was literally right in the steps of moving towards a dream I had of opening my own tea room. And then now it seems like, okay, that can't happen right now. But I do trust God that he has why, why can't a tea room? Order. Why can't a tea room not happen right now? You have to leave your job, so go create a job. Well, I have to take care of my mother who can't take care of herself right now because she had a stroke. Okay. So I was literally getting ready to leave and go um, at the end of September to this conference, you know, that would help teach me how to do it. And so it just seems like er, the brakes were put on, you mm-hmm. know, and I, and I understand those things. Um, but it's still, it's like I say, it's that battle of, well, oh, was I wrong in thinking this timetable? You know, was I wrong in, you know, moving ahead to put the down payment on it? You know, I thought I heard the Lord say, you know, do it even if you're afraid. And so mm-hmm. then now it just seems like um, for time, you know, that timetable it's changed, but okay, I but, but hold on. I trust God. So, are you the only one that to help to is to help your mom? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. Are you the only one to help your mom? Right now, I am. Yes, to be able to do it full time um, until she can, you know, do things on her own. I am the only one who can um, who can do it. And how how are you supposed to months, how yeah. are you supposed to provide for yourself? 
Well, you're that's taking... a good question, Danny. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm trusting God too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good question. Mm-hmm. Good question. Um, Are you married? Good question. No, I'm single. No kids. No kids. That's that's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> you have total freedom well, to like come I said, and go. I've been a nanny for 25 years, so I've raised about four sets. Right That's up. nice. That's so, nice yeah. to be able to go home without any is amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, if you feel like you really heard God, and, and I can tell you that there's times where I thought I heard God, and it was really my flesh talking, um, right. and uh, clearly. And there are other times where um, you know I thought I heard God, and it was clearly the enemy puffing me up. Um, but mostly it's my flesh, you know, whether it was pride or it was arrogance or it was depressive thoughts and self-condemning things and self-criticism, you know, or, uh, or guilt, you know, that was talking uh, instead of, or, you know, my dad's voice, the man that raised me, the, um, not my biological father, but my stepfather's voice, you know, talking to me. And so I can tell you for me that my journey and walking with him, uh, that the older I get and the longer I walk with him, the less I um, am quick to say God said. I have to have so much confirmation and it has to be just crystal, crystal clear. And I'll tell him that, you know, uh, I'm going to move forward because I think I heard you and you have all the power of all the universe to stop me. You have all the power of the universe to close the doors. You have all the power in the whole universe to make it not happen. And so I'm right. going to ask that you make it not happen. Your ear is not deaf. Your arm is not too short. Uh, you know how to make all things happen. So if if you know me, God, I'm dense <laughs> and I am not so sure of myself and hearing you correctly. So please slam the door shut in any way that you can. And then to be honest with you, Charlotte, I do not hold on to it at all. And I'm telling you right. at all. The difference here, see, there's no disappointment if I'm not holding on tight to this thing. I want to be led by him. I want to be in the center of his will. I want to do what he has for me. I don't want to do what I want to do. I don't want to do what other people want me to do. I don't want to do it when I want to do it. I don't want to do it when other people want me to do it. I want to do only the will of my father. And and the older I get, when I was young and first walking with God, oh, I thought I heard his voice all the time telling me to go all kinds of different places and do all kinds of things. And I couldn't have been further from the truth. I was hearing from myself. I was hearing from my own imagination. I didn't, first of all, I hadn't even read the Bible cover to cover. I didn't know anything about his character. I didn't know anything about his spirit. I knew nothing about nothing. I had an imaginary friend is what I had telling me what I wanted to hear. (laughs) That's what I had. And so now it's been 20 something years later and wow, uh, it's very sobering. Um, You know, what I hear, how I hear it. And even when I hear it, I don't just like go all for it. Um, I'm just like, okay, let's, let's just see how this goes. And God, I'm, I'm yours and I'm not holding on to anything. I'm not holding on to, I'm, I'm not getting my heart all wrapped up into this. I'm not getting my, um, emotions all tied up with this. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. You are going to have to just thoroughly convince me that this is the right way to right. go. Thoroughly. You're going to have to convince me of the timing and thoroughly enough to convince me of, of the direction. So, right. and he does. And, and through time and walking with him, you know. You do that. And I also ask for confirmation through other people um, and trusted people that I have praying for me, that I say, hey, this is what I'm praying about. I want you to pray about it. If you hear something back from God, let me know what it is. If you don't, tell me you didn't hear anything. Don't make something up, please, (laughs) because this is my life. And my life is tied to, yeah, my life is tied to millions of other people's lives. And I don't need to make a mistake here. And so I have trusted people that that will speak the truth to me and not just tell me what I want to hear. So, do you, and the Bible says that a wise man has many wise counselors. Do you have that? Right. Do you have many wise counselors? I don't know if I have many, but I definitely have a few in my life that would definitely not lead me astray, you know, and would give me wisdom that, um, um, cause that was the other reason why I really started following your ministry. I even went to one of your first steps was to start really learning in ways that, we're different. When running the business, I would run it properly because I'm a, I'm a, um, I, um, um, oh shoot, I forgot the jewel. I'm, I'm what Pearl. you are. What are you? You're a, yes. I'm yes. A Pearl. Yes. Um, so you're going to give so, all the profits away, right? You're, yeah, you're exactly. going to, you're going to bend exactly. to where everyone, someone is hurting. Yeah, you're not yeah. going to charge enough. You're not going to charge at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm 
podcast, mm-hmm. but I'm fabulous at what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I need that. I need that. You know, I need the Lord to be able to help me with that area, or I'm not going to succeed. And I that's understand true. and know that. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's very, very true. So that's a big issue for me. Yes, um, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, so, um, you know, thank you so much. Because yeah. even with talking with you, I feel like I I really got my answer. I feel like I have a better understanding that if I'm walking forward, if yes. I'm making plans, I yes. can trust God in everything yes. that I'm doing, that he will yes. shut the door or open the door, and that's yes. how I will know. Yes, yes. And, and so continuing to move forward is super important, and it pleases him. The other thing that I can tell you, Charlotte, is hold it loosely. Hold it loosely. Because sometimes he gives vision, but he gives all the time. He gives vision in part. Do you understand? Right. He gives it in part. And yes. we, with the part that we get, Charlotte, you know what we do with it? We think it's the whole picture. And it's not right. at all. Like, not even a little bit. Like, it is so right. small. And you don't know it until hindsight looking back. That's the only time you know. It's right. like, oh, man, I thought it was I thought it was this and this and this. It's like, no, here's what happens. He gives us a part. Of, he gives us a vision. We think it's the full picture. And then we fill out all the rest. Right. We, <laughs> we try to start running with it and put it all in place. And then, you know, something happens. And then we're wondering what's wrong. But really, mm-hmm. it was just a step. And we but just even this, it. just even this, Charlotte, yeah. the thing that that happened with your mom. Have you prayed about, is it you that he has chosen to serve her right now? Ha- or have you just assumed, my mom's sick, I got to go? No, you are his and you need to lay every decision. Come on, Proverbs 3, 4, 5, and 6. Simple. Trust, which means fully abandoned, clinging to, like holding on to, having no no fear, having no personal gain in the situation, not trying to direct it to be what you think it should be. Trust does not mean that you have your own understanding of it. It says, lean not on your own understanding. Trust in him. Lean not in your own understanding. So your own understanding would say that you're the only one available to help your mom. Right. And that you should do it. You haven't even asked him. I haven't even asked him. Right. Okay. Right. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. heart wanting to be the one to do exactly. it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So, and, and that, that's how tightly I walk with him. That's how tightly I walk with him. Where do you want me today? What do you want me right. doing? This looks like a shiny object. Whether it is mom is sick, I need to run to her rescue. Or so-and-so is hurt, I need to run to their rescue. But where do you want me to be? Okay. Right. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding, but in all, all, all your ways. That's a big word. It's Acknowledge big. him and he will direct your path. It's a life scripture for me. Life scripture yeah. for me. All right, lady, thank you so much. Let me pray for you real quick. Father, I thank you for Charlotte. I thank you for the decisions that she is facing. Father, I pray that she is able to release her mother to you, that she is able to release the dream of the tea shop, that she is able to release all of the vision and plans and all the things, the purposes that she, that she has had birthed in her. Father, I pray that, you re- that she was able to release them all, hold them loosely, and wait upon you. And you are the one that endures her strength. You are the one that lifts her up. You are the one that guides her. You are the one that directs her. Father, I pray that she just lays everything down and is willing to follow your direct lead in the fullness of faith. Not in fear, not in question, not in double-mindedness. Boy, did I hear God? Did I not hear God? Was I right? Was I wrong? None of that. You are her father. She is your child, and you know exactly how to lead her. And there's not a mistake in this. Yeah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Charlotte. God bless you, and I pray that your mother gets healed. We've got Jim Hall from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Welcome to the show. How can I help you today? Hi, Danny. Um, my question is, um, I feel God daily. Um, I backslide. I might get upset or something or um, even curse, which um, that's the way I don't want to go. Um, why can't I get through a day without feeling the need to ask to be saved over and over <laughs> again? You know, it's Jim. frustrating. <laughs> 
I love you. <laughs> I love your transparency. I think you are so awesome. Okay, first of all, let me let me address a couple of these things. Um, do you think that I live a different life than you? <laughs> probably, it's uh, probably more similar than I, I would imagine. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I think I probably fail God every single day in lots of different places. I'm sure I do. Right. Um, now, the second thing, because what happens in this situation is we can compare ourselves to other people, right? And we can say, well, you know, right. you know, we can sometimes feel like we're the only one that fails God. And partially because we live in this disgusting world, especially the church world, that is so fake. They are so not real. They are so not transparent. They so lie every single Sunday when they show up in their best and they're putting on their best and their big smile and hanging on their spouse and they just got in a fight on the way to church. You know, the, the husband's got a porn addiction. The wife has a porn addiction. They both are gluttonous. You know, they got all kinds of greedy problems. They're gamblers, whatever, but nobody knows. You know, no one can know the mess that we're in. So, you know, a lot of times we can look at those people that go to church and we can say, oh, you know, they're so perfect, but why do I keep screwing up? I got to tell you, uh, fi just 15 years ago, you know, Hans and I on our way to church every Sunday, we'd be just screaming at each other, okay? And then on the way home, you know, so I'd be, I would sit through a sermon and just go, yes, I want to make those changes. And I totally screw up five minutes after the church was done, you know, so I know exactly how you're feeling, man. I was like, I can't do this. The other yeah. thing you said is that sometimes you curse, you know, that you curse. Okay, let me, I want to, I just want to, because just last night at the dinner table, we were talking about this. Okay, curse as in you say some nasty, filthy words, or is it a real curse, like what the Bible calls a curse? Well, um, I, get, I go home, and um, the, the drivers here, honestly, are terrible, and I um, God bless him. But um, I I get upset about something somebody did. It's really stupid. I mean, <laughs> but um, I I feel horrible. I'm like I feel like the most horrible person ever. By the time I get home, because I'm like, man, I'm better than that, you know. <laughs> okay, so are you saying you're cussing? That. You're cussing? Yeah, but... That's waving with one finger? <laughs> right. Okay, that is not cursing. A curse is when you are speaking a curse, like what we see in the Bible, speaking a curse over somebody. That right. is very different than cussing at somebody, okay? Cussing, wait, right. Uh, okay, very big difference, okay? All right, so let, let us talk about the cussing. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, you're right. You feel guilty. You feel ashamed about that, right? You don't feel good about that, and you say, I'm better, and God, please forgive me. Okay, yeah. I, I get it, all right? And I've done my fair share, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I have yes. done my fair share of that ah, and have prayed and prayed and prayed. God, take that one word. <laughs> Let's just start with the yes. big one <laughs> first out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, and I, I prayed, I've prayed about it and I said, you know, can you help me out here? You know, yeah. I, but I, I, I do have to control myself and, yes. and I do have to represent him. Yes. Uh, uh, with love, as the yes. Says. yes. Okay. Well, let me let me just kind of tell you what I did. You know, it might work for you. <laughs> uh, it might not, but I have a feeling it should because you know it's totally biblical and it can work. Number one, Jim. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much he loves you? I do. Do you know do. that there's nothing that can separate you from his love? I know that. Yeah. Do you like know in in the deepness of your soul that even when you're cussing that n dumb driver out, that he's looking at you going, "Oh, honey." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there yeah. there goes my passionate boy again. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Right? And he he doesn't right. have a, you know, a big belt up there and he's going to smack the snot out of you because you're not being perfect. That's right. Right? Okay, so I, if you know that, then we are going to, then then you've got a great road ahead of you. You see, when you don't know that, that's where things get worse. Things never get better right. when you're trying to be better out of fear. But if you're trying to be better because of how much you love him and how much you know that he loves you and that you want to please him and you don't want to be that son that makes him go, oi, 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 I got to pray more for this kid. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. So, first of all, there are some scriptures I want you to look up. 
okay? Because a few years okay. ago, there's a few years ago, there was something in my life that that literally had me by the throat that could provoke me into the worst of me. That could provoke. I mean, nothing else could provoke the worst out of me than this one certain circumstance. And I came okay. to the place of this understanding. And so in your case, it's the drivers in Oklahoma. <laughs> Could you yeah. imagine if you lived in New York or Chicago or L.A.? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I've had friends from there, and they told me this ain't nothing. So. Exactly. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it is really funny. <laughs> okay, so I have so many places I can go with you right now, but I want to start here. So one of the first things that he did, okay, and just so happens, you know, I come across that scripture that talks about the flesh, right? Romans talks about it, Galatians talks about it, Ephesians talks about it, right? So if you were to type in, I don't know if you have the Bible on your phone or you have a way, you can Google it, uh, but you were to type in the word flesh, you'll see all the different places that the Bible talks about the flesh, especially in Romans, Galatians, and Ephesians, even Corinthians. Okay. And so when I did that study on that, and I, and I look at, wow, the deeds of the flesh, the deeds of the flesh, and then, of course, then there is the fruit of the Spirit, right? And the fruit of the Spirit and the deeds of the flesh are, are in complete opposition with each other. And so it's your flesh that's being activated. In 1 Corinthians 13, it's so powerful. It says that love is not provoked. Right. Right, it does. Love is not provoked. And it's not easily angered. These were the two things. Oh, wait, and it's also patient. <laughs> oh, wait, and it's also, right. it's also kind. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't envy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Okay. So so when I saw that love is not provoked, oh my gosh, Jim, I was like, ew, oh my gosh, because I used to justify, well, he is provoking me. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But love is not provoked. Yeah. And it's not easily angered. So the next set of scriptures I looked up was about slow to anger. And I began to right. train my flesh with these passages that if you look up everything that, that has to do with being slow to anger, like, for example, there's so many. They're all in my bathroom, by the way. <laughs> They are posted on my walls in my bathroom. So these, at least Maybe, literally, yeah. you should try it too. I need to do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because again, Paul even said that we have to train our flesh, right? We have to train it to submit to the Holy Spirit and walking right. in the Spirit. If we walk in the Spirit, we're not provoked. We're not easily angered, right? And walking right. in the Spirit, walking by the Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, these are the things that cause us to not be easily angered, okay? So there are so many, I've done so many shows on this and actually starting three years ago because this was something I had to personally change. This was something I had to work on. This was a, this was a major character flaw that I had that I didn't want to change it because I didn't want to get spanked. That was, he wasn't going to spank me for it. I mean, I guess if I continued in my, you know, lawless ways, then I would have gotten spanked, but, and, and rightfully so been disciplined by him. But this was where I was saying, this is wrong in me. This is not yeah. right. This is a character flaw. This is not going to help me be promoted in what I do. This is not going to please my father. This is a, this is a deficit. In my character, it is bad for my family. It's bad for my health. It's bad for everything. And so, you know what? Um, we'll have, uh, if you go on our website, okay, because I think that a lot of these scriptures are, are outlaid in, uh, on the website. And, and if you, I don't even know what titles you would type in there, but uh, just find all the shows starting three years ago that have to do with anger, okay? And we'll post some okay. of them even on Facebook. Um, but being slow to anger, being patient, um, walking in the spirit. But the slow to anger ones are really important. Like, here's an example, that uh, he who is slow to anger is stronger than he that can overcome a city. That's amazing. So when I look at it, it's stronger it than the mighty who can overcome a city, okay? Another right. one, it, it is up to our own um, discretion. He who is slow to anger it's up to his own discretion to overlook a transgression. Wow. When I first saw that one, and these are all in Proverbs. Proverbs has most of them. 
that one in itself, I went, ah, oh, yeah, you know why? Because I know what a screw up I am. I know how quick I can do something that I'm not proud of and that my father's not proud of. And, and so it is up to my own discretion. If I'm slow to anger, it is up to my own discretion that I am going to overlook a transgression in someone else because I know I'm two seconds away from doing the same darn thing. Who am I to judge someone else? So that's why it's up to, and, and it says, and it's our glory. The Bible says it's our own glory to overlook a transgression. To not bring That's judgment right. on someone is our glory. That's one I really focused on for a long time. There are so many of them. I want you to eat them. I want you to, to dwell on them. I want you to pray about them. I want you to focus on them. And it will. this thing will no longer be the ruling, reigning thing over you anymore, but that you'll be stronger in your patience. You'll be walking more in the spirit. Um, and that's another thing is that daily, especially when you're on your way home or on the way to work, what should you be praying? Mm -hmm. Father, Fill me with yeah. your Holy Spirit and show me who these drivers are. Show me how I can pray for them while I'm driving right alongside them. And how I can love them as he loves them. Yes, as well. yes, yes, yes. And how you can be praying for them. You know, you'll get a That's different right. heart change uh, in this direction. Yeah. I'm really proud of you, Jim, because in transparency and in confession is when he brings the solution. It's when he brings the breakthrough. It's when he brings the change. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Let me pray for you. Father, thank I thank you. you so much for Jim. I thank you for your spirit that is in him. I thank you for your truth that is in him. I thank you for his complete humility and his uh, ability without shame, without guilt, to just say it like it is. Um, Father, I know you love that about him. I pray that you guide him to the places of where we're talking about in scripture. Teach him the way you taught me. Teach him to look up all those slow to anger passages, patient passages, uh, love passages, walking in the spirit passages just so that he can train his flesh is exactly what we're supposed to do, uh, that we're not supposed to let that fall out of heaven, although it, your spirit will come on us and make it easier, but we're supposed to make a diligent effort in these changes inside of us. Thank you, Father, for having me to have the opportunity to talk to him today and this message to go forth the way that it is. We ask that you bless him and the drivers that he's driving with and his heart and everything that he's doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Jim. God bless you. We've got uh, Jenna Riser from Utah. Jenna, welcome to the show. How can I help you today or serve you or Hi. whatever? Yes. Hi, Danny. Hi. Thank you so much. Yes. What um, can I do okay. for you? So my family has been going through a lot of major life changes. Um, and so I want to know what is the key to knowing if the dreams you have are God's dreams for you um, or not, especially when they seem unreachable to everyone else's eyes. Yes. Oh, my goodness, honey. <laughs> I can do like 17,000 shows on that one right there. Right? <laughs> seriously. I, I seriously can. Um, okay. So number one, when it comes to dreams, I hold them loosely. And I desire for his dream to be in me and for me to not be so attached to a dream that it causes contention with my family. That I would trust in him and his timing and the rollout of that dream, that it wouldn't create anxiety. You see, here's what I can tell you. Let me just tell you this quick story. It's so awesome. I could tell you stories for hours on just this one alone. Okay. Uh, two, almost two and a half decades ago, yeah, uh, Erica's 24, soon to be 25. Um, after we had uh, Erica and Cabe, um, my husband was done having kids. Like he did not want any more kids. But my dream was to have more. And I had that woman thing going on. You know, I was like, <gasps> the yearning, I gotta have more kids, right? <laughs> and he was like, uh-uh. I mean, he was rude and foul with his absolute no way, never gonna happen. So I would do what a lot of women do. I'd manipulate. I'd press, I'd keep asking, I'd ask in a different way, then try a different way, and then try another way, and then I would try the guilt trip. Yeah, you are keeping me away from my dream. You're playing the position of God by saying no. Oh, did I, I spiritually abused him with my mouth. I manipulated him, which is straight up abuse. I was rude and foul in every way. None of that worked. One day in a fight about I believe God has called me to have this dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Based on all my methods of trying to make God's dream come to pass, it was obviously rooted in the pit of hell and in my flesh. 
So in the midst, we are fighting about this. And I'll never forget where we were standing. And he looks at me and he says, so if you really think that you're supposed to have more kids, then you might want to talk to your God. And he said it really foul. And it hit me. I went, that's a good idea. I literally left the fight, walked into my closet, laid on the floor and said, God, if you are the one indeed who has planted this dream and this desire in me to have more kids, then you got a problem. I want them. He doesn't. So you got to fix this. <laughs> and I said, so if this dream is truly from you, then please soften my desire. And I'm weeping at this point because this is killing me. I am losing sleep over it. It is causing fights in my house. It is causing me to resent my husband. This can't be right. So please soften the desire. And if I am supposed to have kids, then you've got to plant a desire in the man you chose to marry me. And last, if this dream is not from you, take it away. I want nothing to do with it. I get up from the floor and weeping about this. I felt better, first of all, right away, because I released this thing. I just let go. And right away, God began to do something. He softened the voice in me of that dream. You see, what happens is, is when we begin to voice this dream, and especially when we fight with the dream, you mean fighting with everyone who's against it and mm -hmm. shoving it down their throat? Now, I know, Jenna, you've probably never tried that one. <laughs> <clears throat> I have a hunch that you might have. When you've done that, it causes people to resent the dream all the more because our priority is wrong. You see, my priority should have been honoring my husband and honoring his decision and talking to his boss, which was God, and trusting God with the vision and the dream that was planted in me, and releasing the anxiety, the worry, the stress, not holding on to that thing so tightly that now it's mine and it's up to me to force it to happen. I was so young in my walk with him, I didn't know any better, but that's how I did it, and it was wrong. So. I released it completely. I forgot about it. I never spoke about it again. Didn't say a single word. And I began to honor my husband and just be done. Two months later, no joke, exactly two months later, Hans and I are having a lunch date and we are eating ribs at Tony Roma's. Listen to this. I am chomping on a rib with that honey barbecue sauce. You, can, you, can you just taste that honey barbecue sauce? <laughs> and he says to me, you know, honey, I've been thinking. I'm like, yeah, as I'm chomping on the rib. He says, I've been thinking we should have two more kids. I bit the bone. And I looked down because I did not want to do a backflip right then and there and jump out of my seat and jump all over him in the middle of that restaurant. I just wanted to do what I had been trained to do in business, and that was put on a poker face. Pretend like I didn't hear that. <laughs> just let him keep talking himself into this new idea that he just had. <laughs> so I just said, oh, really? really? Uh, well, tell me why. I was only asking for one more kid. I wasn't asking for two, but I didn't say that. I'm like, oh, tell me why. And I'm just chomping on that rib, right? And he's like, well, you know, if we were to get pregnant right now, there would be three years apart between this kid and Cabe. So it's almost like an only child. So I was thinking maybe we should have two, like back to back. And I'm like, I just kept eating the rib. I picked up another rib. I am pretty sure I had that honey barbecue sauce all over both cheeks, almost probably into my ears because I was doing everything I could not to jump outside of myself with excitement. And I said, so, you know, when, when are you thinking that you want to kind of step forward in this? He's like, well, why, why, when we get back from our trip to Washington seeing the family, why don't we, you know, why don't you take the IUD out and, and let's, let's start trying. I'm like, all right. And I just left it like that. January 2nd, I went to the doctor. Had the IUD taken out. January 2nd, I conceived Roman. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's crazy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's really from him, he makes it come to pass. What happens is when you start speaking it and you start using it to press or manipulate or get upset or it creates contention, that means that the relationships in your life have been put under the dream. The dream goes under them. It does not go over them. So, so what do you do when, like, like my husband and I, we are 100% on the same page. It's the two of us. We're so excited about what we have for our plans. But it's like everyone around us feels like it's 
we're shooting too far. They're afraid we're going to fail, and it's going to... No. And they're afraid to see their babies mess up, basically. And so <clears throat> we feel defeated because we are so excited, and we just love each other, and we want to go and live this life that we think God has planned for us. Yep. But um, it seems very unreachable because it's not normal. It's not what most people do. Okay, but um, listen to me. Sorry. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what most people do. Was Abraham like most people? Was King David most people? Was Jesus most people? Was Daniel most people? Was Moses most people? Was Paul most people? Was Peter most people? Did they have people? Did Jesus have people against him? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so guess what? You're on the right track. And what I'm telling you is, is that when you hold so tightly that it causes you to resent others who are not supporting you, the dream is in the wrong place. Do you understand? That yeah. It's causing you to lose sleep at night. It's causing you to get upset with people. It's causing you to get offended by those who are not supporting you. And I'm going to finish what I was saying. That when you try to sell it and people aren't buying it and it causes you to be offended or resent or to cut them off, this is the enemy involved. And this is your flesh, the enemy of your flesh involved. And what does that look like? It means this. He, anxiety rises up in you when you have taken the dream and the purpose and made it yours instead of God's. When you have gone, I'm going to do this regardless, <laughs> now uh -huh. you have taken charge and he is not in charge. So, but when you do not uh, cling to it like that and you don't worship it anymore, then it's like you just know and trust and you just know there will be a day when all of those who told you not to, that told you wouldn't work, that told you you're going to fail, that, that, it, that this is not God, they are going to eat their words one day and it will happen and you'll just pray mercy for them. But because if you walk in God's character, there's still going to be great relationship there. There's going to be love there. You're not going to harbor resentment or bitterness and cut people off, but that you're going to just walk and trust. And it also teaches you something. The next time you encounter somebody in your family or friends that has a dream or a vision, that you'll be supportive. Yeah, that does. You'll be supportive. In fact, I would even make a list, Jenna, of anyone that maybe has come to you in the past that had a dream or a vision or something they want to do, and you're kind of like, yeah, but what about, yeah, but what, but, yeah, but what, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. we reap what we sow. It might be some of the yeah. same people that are against you now. <laughs> It might be some of the same people. In fact, on that note, I want to I tell you this last uh, story because this is really important too. There's something that, you know, us parents have a tendency of doing. You know, my husband and I were, were two young kids uh, who started out. I was, 20, I was 19 when I started in business. He was 18. Uh, by the time we met, he was 18. I was 22. And, um, you know, we, uh, we just kind of, you know, bootstrapped it and made things happen. And then here's our kids, right? And my husband had a really hard time just releasing our children to go after what their heart's desire was. And he started coming up with this messaging of, well, make sure you have a fallback plan. Make sure you have a fallback plan. And I sat him down. It was actually pretty recent um, because he's had a hard time, like, jumping all in with some of our kids' vision. And, and this was an interesting conversation where I said to him, I said, Hans, I said, you've always told me that your mom, even with her drugs and, and alcohol addiction and all the mess that she made, there's one thing that you really appreciated about her more than anything, and that was that she always believed in you and always said you could do anything. She told you and your brother both that you could do anything you set your mind to, that she believed in you, that you would succeed no matter what it is that you tried to do. He's like, yeah. And I said, how come you won't extend that same message to your kids? He's like, yeah. And what is it? It's the protection of a father. It's a father who's lived a life, some of it very, very hard, and others of it very, very blessed. It's a father who has gained some knowledge and wisdom through the years. I said, but look at uh, what your mom, who didn't have any of what you had, planted in you. Would you have become what you became had she did not back you the way that she backed you? And all it was was words of encouragement. He's like, no, not at all. So here's what I say to you, friend. Those who are around you that are, they're coming from a heart of wanting to protect. They're coming from a place of their own perspective, their own knowledge. They don't mean to hurt you. You make sure and guard your heart because if it's really from God, you're not going to walk an offense. And so in the case with Hans, 
he realized, like, man, I need, I just need to tell them I believe in them no matter what. I said, exactly. So anyway, it's amazing how we, when we love people, they can sometimes stand in their way. So maybe make a list of people maybe that you have not fully supported, got behind their vision, got behind their dream, and go to them and say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me um, that I didn't support you those years ago when you, you needed it, and I was wrong, and please forgive me, and I understand what it feels like now. All right, Jenna, that's it for now. I got to move. Got to move. We got to go to April Howe from New York. April. Hi, Danny. Hi. What can I do for you? Well, my question was on prayers and distraction. I recently attended your Cleveland event, and uh, I surrendered. And it was amazing, and I felt um, a relief and at peace. But then I got home, and I thought, okay, it's time to start implementing some of the stuff that I learned. Of course, beginning with prayer. Yes. But I just feel like a major roadblock. You know, I feel like I sit down to talk to God and I have a million things in my head. You yes. know, like who thinks of a grocery list in the middle <laughs> of a prayer? I feel like. Oh, everybody. Everybody it's thinks of a grocery terrible. list in the middle of prayer. You're not the only one. <laughs> I just, it feels disrespectful. Like, you're right. You're, how, you're how right. Not... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is so awesome, April. Like I can't start if I can't start praying to be able to follow his direction. That I yeah. can't. I can't go further. This is so awesome. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. The next time that happens, I want you to say everything you just said to me to him. I have. Good job. I have. I'm even laughing at myself. Like, what? Well, why is this so? Why is this so difficult? And I feel like it's got. It has become a little bit more difficult. And I feel like the. Because I feel like I'm I'm trying, I've been drawn to him, and I feel like the closer I feel like I'm getting to him, I get pushed back 10 steps further Okay, back. but listen, you're really not, because you're actually pressing in closer to him even in the midst of the distraction. So here's here's the facts. What you focus on is what you get more of. So I have a question for you. In the last two months, do you know him a little better? Are you a little closer to him? than you were two months yeah. ago. Oh. Yeah, So what's absolutely. what's the truth? What do you mean? The truth is you've gotten closer to him in two months, even with the distractions. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's... Okay. That's but true. if you focus on the distractions, even right like, gosh, I feel so bad. No, you just say that to him. You confess that to him. And then you keep praying. Then you keep praying. So it's... All right, well, you know what's in my head. There's a grocery list forming. Father, I'm sorry. Anyway, okay, so let's talk about this, <laughs> right? And then you just yeah. keep praying, right? Like, oh, Father, I, I, I really want to, I really want to, like, hear your voice, and I, I really feel bad right now because I'm, I'm like, focusing on the dry cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> he knows that. He knows every one of your thoughts, every right. single one of them. So, Father, help me to focus more on you. He loves, in my, I, in my experience, again, I, I'm not the chief authority on God. No human is. Not a single one of us. I believe that he uh, kind of laughs, chuckles at the fact that we think he doesn't know what we're feeling. So, look, think of, do you have a best friend? Uh, I do. I okay. do. Do you just like share everything with your best my friend? Husband, my husband. Oh, that's so awesome. So, do you, have you like talked to him about this stuff? His name is also Hans, by the way. Oh, that's awesome. It's a great name. I love that name. Jim, uh, I do too. So, do you, <laughs> have you shared any of this stuff with him? I share everything with him. That's so awesome. What a blessing. And, yes. you know, he just, he probably chuckles with you. He does. Uh huh. Yeah. He does. <laughs> I believe your father in heaven is chuckling with you as well. And I want you to know. I have wrestled with that. Everyone I know who's honest about their prayer life has had that happen too. I even had one preacher just said this. He was really funny. And it kind of changed my perspective a little bit. It's really funny. Mm -hmm. He said he would keep a piece of paper with him while he was in prayer. And that, you know... Oh, you didn't turn off the toaster. He'd say, thank you, devil. And he'd write that down. <laughs> he would start to get, you know, you got to pick up some eggs. Thank you, devil. He'd write that down. And then just go back to praying. Okay. Let me, let me give you a couple little things that might be able to help you stay focused in prayer and, and give you more direction. But maybe you even start with that. You have that other piece of paper that is, oh, thank you, devil. And you write down what it was and then it's gone. It's not in your head anymore. Right? 
Right, right. Okay. So one of the things um, that I did is I have a prayer journal. Uh, when I first started walking with God, and I started to write out my prayers to him. And I also, like, when you open up the journal, you know, there's the the hard part. That's not a page, but, you know, that's a part that you can still write on. So I had a list there, kind of a running list of things that I wanted to pray for. Things that I was feeling, things that I wanted healed from. Do you understand what I mean? So I'd have this list. Yeah. that, I, And so I would start my prayer with that list and I'd be able to go down with that list. Now, let me help you on what should be the first thing on the list is Thanksgiving. That's what I have found through the years, the best way to enter into his presence where I can feel him. And that's with Thanksgiving. Not with my burdens, not with my requests, not with my petitions, not with my feelings, but purposely, deliberately, diligently telling him who he is. Telling him, you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. And man, what a beautiful job you've done. (laughs) You are my father. And there's no one like you. You are the master of the universe. You're the one who planted every star in the sky, even named them. You are the one that put the moon and the sun to govern us by day and by night. You are the one that brings forth bread from the earth. You're the one that filled the earth with all the waterways. You're the one that has filled the heavens with clouds that drop water on us in due season. So I start my prayer with that, telling him who he is. Come on. Don't you love it when your husband tells you who you are? Yeah. Don't you love it when he tells you you're beautiful and reminds you of all the great things that you're good at and you guys talk about and reminisce when you first met? Do that with God. Do that with him. And you may not even get to the place of petitioning him. Because I find that when I really focus on how awesome he is and, you know, I tell him about, gosh, man, look what you did. Like, you parted the Red Sea. Like, that was massive. What an amazing miracle It's still being talked about 4,000 years later. Like, that's amazing. So huge. (laughs) You know, and you spoke. And then there was light. Like, wow. That's insane. Okay. So (laughs) seriously, talk to him just like that. Okay. And what I have found is sometimes that's just where it stops because that is like, So, I don't know, I get filled with the Spirit, I can sense His presence, and oftentimes I end up weeping or I end up just wanting to love on Him or whatever. And then, okay, you can go into this next next thing that I think is wise, is show me what I need to be forgiven for. Right. Show me. What what did I do yesterday? What have I done already today (laughs) that I need to be forgiven for? Please show me what it is because I don't want nothing to separate me from you. And if he shows you, you're like, thank you. Yeah, you're right, man. I did cut that person off. Yeah, I did waste my hand with one finger instead of all five fingers. Oh, I did have the wrong attitude at work yesterday. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for showing that because that's not who I want to be. Thank you. I confess that is wrong. I know that's not who you made me to be, and I ask for your help in that direction. And then the third thing is, is that you receive his forgiveness. You receive his washing. You receive being completely cleansed and purified. I've done quite a bit of teaching this year on that. The the, um, tabernacle, how it was set up, was like a perfect place of prayer. Um, Mm -hmm. And and, um, just kind of symbolism, symbolism on how to pray. You don't have to do it that way every day. I'm just saying like sometimes that's the kind of guidance I need, and I like that little outline for me. So like I picture myself diving into the water basin because the Bible, you know, it shows the third thing in there is a water basin. And I just dive myself right into that sucker (laughs) because I'm filthy. You know what I mean? So it's like, bam, thank you for your (laughs) cleansing, man. I so needed to be purified of those things, (laughs) right? And then it's like then pull out your petition, you know, and hey, you know who these people are. You know what these things are needed for. You know what my bank balance is. You know what's going on. You know what my needs are before I even ask. So I know you got it all covered and you got it taken care of. And then there's sometimes he puts a burden on you to really specifically pray for some people. So when you have kind of a map, it helps the distractions to stay away. It's kind of like following a recipe. You know what I mean? It's so it, the distractions stay away. If that distraction comes out, eh, thank you, devil. <laughs> Write it down. Yeah, I do need to pick up milk. <laughs> anyway. Well, that's what I worry about. I feel like I worry that if I'm so distracted that I can't even get my words out, if 
you know, even if he is trying to give me the answers that I'm looking for or yeah. it, that I'm blinded to it, that I'm so yeah. consumed in everything that's going on that I'm that I'm really not listening. And well, I, as I you persist, so stuck. as you per- but you're not stuck and that's a lie. You are not stuck. You just confess that you are closer to him than you were two months ago, right? True. Yeah. Exactly. So you have got to focus on the progress that you're making and okay. follow that little outline that I gave you. Have that other okay. piece of paper there and get right back to it. Get right back to okay. it. Get right back to it. He knows. Okay. So you just be honest with him and and he will help to guide you. Something else that I've done in the past too, when it when it seems like it's a spirit that's just distracting, is I before I even start that prayer, it's like I bind in the name of Jesus with all the authority that's in me, the spirit of distraction. You have no place here. You can go back to hell where you belong. Go bug someone else. I'm not available today. Sure. <laughs> okay? Right. Then you'll feel that the air is clear, you get going, then it tries to come back. You're like, I told you, go back to hell where you belong. You have no authority here. So you can keep coming back if you'd like. I'm just going to keep telling you to go back to hell where you belong. So however long you want to play this game, let's go. Game on. I have the spirit of the living God in me. You will lose. In fact, you already lost. Goodbye. Right. There you go. All right, lady, I'm proud of you. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you so much. In fact, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bind that spirit of distraction and guilt and shame, worry and anxiety. You have no place inside of April. April is not your playing field. She belongs to the Father through the Son who laid down his life, spilled his blood, covered her, protects her, purifies her, cleanses her. There is nothing that can separate her from her and her father. I also declare the truth over her that Yahweh is her shepherd. Yes. And her, his sheep know his voice. April knows his voice. Yes. Father, I pray for clarity. I pray for peace when she is walking with you. I pray for blessing as she walks with you. We ask for all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, April. God bless you. Thanks so much for calling in and sharing. That's awesome. Wow. All I know is um, I hope today was helpful for you. I know and I could sense. I'm sure you could too. You could sense the presence of God. You could sense his wisdom coming from everybody that was talking. You could also see solutions um, maybe that uh, we didn't even see. Um, So I pray for you today that God just completely radically blesses you in an unusual, unusual way. And by the way, Uh, If you find yourself like we're April or any of the other uh, precious people that joined us today, Jim or whoever, there's a lot of training that we've done and is available on our website. If you look up all the spiritual, if you click on spiritual, find all the spiritual training that we've done, uh, it is packed rich with simple strategies and simple steps uh, to help not only your prayer life, but to help your finances, to understand the kingdom of heaven when it comes to money. And and, and you're not ever going to hear a sermon that's going to result in give us an offering. No, we are a for-profit business. Uh, and, and each one of these teachings about finances to help you unlock your, your uh, finances, you know, from debt to help you come out of debt, to help you start creating wealth and what the Bible says about creating wealth. No, it doesn't follow the sky, but boy, there is a plan and a purpose and a way to go after and get it and then what to do with it also. Um, And same with business. I mean, we have all this business training in our spiritual library. So what the Bible says about business, how to run a business, how to deal with your employees, as well as all the family relationships, all of that is in our entire spiritual equipping series, starting with the verse one that was ever done, which was uh, spirit-driven success. Get your copy today. Start filling yourself with killer wisdom that's going to help you get to your goals and help you to succeed and be on that plan of purpose with your God. God bless you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Please let us know how you like today's program. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Be sure to tell a friend about the Danny Johnson show. It just might be the key to the breakthrough they need. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you get to the life you've always wanted. Hi, welcome to the Danny Johnson YouTube channel. We're super excited to have you here. And every single week, we're gonna make sure that you get awesome videos for your business, career, making more money, saving money, annihilating your debt, as well as helping you to handle those really tough problems that you have with people at home, as well as at work, and taking those really good relationships you already have and causing them to flourish and grow. All you have to do is click that subscribe button right down here. Click that and you'll be subscribed to an amazing 
community of people, as well as some great videos that will help to improve your life. Thanks so much for being here. Subscribe now would be good. Just click it. I know you can see it. It's somewhere down here. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.